yo. I'm going to show you four different ways to help you create React components like a senior developer in just six minutes. Let's get to it. We're going to start by examining a button component written by a junior developer and explain everything that we can improve with it and what's wrong. So here we're going to be defining an interface where we're going to add the ref, disabled, children, and a whole bunch of other props that we're going to add manually uh, and then extract and then finally pass in. So you'll see we pass in the ref, disabled, on click, and then put the children in the middle. As for the class name disabled and styles, we are going to be using this variant, which is strongly typed as either primary or secondary to extract the style that we want to apply to it in this object. Also, we're going to be conditionally rendering this disabled class right here, which is going to be opacity 50 and cursor not allowed based on this Boolean, which we're going to be doing in line. Now, this component isn't terrible, but it has a mixture of anti patterns and straight up bugs that we're going to address. So we can first look at this component props file right here, where instead of manually typing all of the props that we want to eventually pass to the button, we can use this component props without ref type from React to actually get all of them without having to type them ourselves. So you'll see in this button component here, if we look at the props, which is spread, we have everything that we need, you know, over 280 different fields, right? So we have disabled, title, form, a lot of stuff you'll recognize. And if we ever try to define a button, for instance, if we go into the special button here and look at the props, we can pass in everything. So that includes, you know, disabled, on click, on abort, all of that stuff, right? Uh, and if you want to actually use this component props without ref or component props without just a vanilla HTML element, you can use the type of operator here on a React component, and that will do the exact same thing. So you'll see in the special button right here, we're taking in those exact same props, which is from this button right here. So what this is going to do is prevent you from manually adding all of these, you know, on click, children, disabled, all of that stuff. But it's also going to give you the exact types. So you'll see in on click, we're defining this as a function that returns void. However, if we go down to on click, you'll see it's much more complicated than that. It's going to be a mouse event handler that takes in the generic of the HTML button element. One thing you'll notice in this example is we're using the component props without ref instead of just the component props as we're doing down here. And this is because refs are actually handled very differently in React compared to every other component. So in our bad junior dev example, we're passing in this ref prop right here and then passing it to the button, but this is actually going to error. This is not going to work because whenever you pass a ref to a component, React essentially erases it unless you use a special syntax. So that syntax is going to be the forward ref function, which is exported from React. So it's going to take in two generic arguments. So it's going to be the type of the element that the ref is going to be on. In this case, it's going to be a button. And then we need the props of that element without the ref. So that's why we're using component props without ref here. So once you call it, it's going to give you this ref here as the second argument after the props, and then you can pass it in and it's going to work. If you don't want to use these, you know, basic HTML tags, you can just use the component ref function and then use the type of with a component here. So this could be anything, uh, but ultimately it's going to return the correct HTML element type, and then you can add those props after and then just pass in the ref like so. Now that we've learned how to automatically get these component props for an element and then also for the ref, we're going to address having this really large and ugly class name at the bottom. So to do that, we're going to be using the CN function. And you'll see this in a lot of popular UI libraries like Shad CN UI. So if we take a look here, it's going to be a combination of these two functions from these two packages, Tailwind Merge and CLSX. And essentially what it's going to do is let you pass in a bunch of Tailwind classes, and then it's going to merge them and remove the duplicates. So here you'll see that we have this VGTL 400, but we also have this VG Red 300. And you'll notice on the right, the red is the one winning. And this is because that Tailwind Merge function is going to remove all of the previous instances of a given class and only take the last one. So if we swap the order, Teal is going to win. Something that CLSX does is allow us to not only pass in these strings, but also objects where we have a key, which is going to be a string and a class name, and then a Boolean for the value. So here, if it's disabled, we're going to be rendering this opacity 50 class in cursor not allowed. So that makes it way more convenient than using this conditional right here and then chaining everything and adding spaces. Finally, we're going to be creating a much more robust version of the styles object that's going to fit in with the rest of the techniques that we've learned in this video. So in this final example, you'll see that we're defining this button variance using this CVA function from class variance authority. So CVA is first going to take a list of tailwind classes that you want to apply to your component no matter what. So here you can see we have stuff like the display, the gap, um, the size of the font, the font weight, stuff like that. Next, we're going to pass in an object that contains the variance and default variance key. So variance is going to define any number of properties that you want to be able to change based on a string for your component. So here we're going to have variant, which is going to affect the color of the button and then also the text color, the shadow, 
and then we have size which is going to affect the height and then the padding so this is similar to how we are adding the primary and secondary styles but now instead of just affecting the color we can also affect the size and any number of other properties now i will say this variant is a, a little bit misleading because we're using the word variant so much but we can change this to literally whatever we want so you can see it's fully type safe once we change it to asd you'll see that default variants now requires us to add the asd default variant so to actually consume this we first need to you know once again extend the component props without ref as we learned but also add this variant props right here which is from the class variants authority package so we're going to add the type of those button variants that we just defined and then in this button component you'll see that we can now see them so variant fully type safe default or destructive and then size default or small and then we can tie all this together by using class names on this button variants where we're going to pass in that variant that we extracted the size and then also the class name and this is effectively going to look at what variant we passed in so if we passed in destructive and then small what it's going to do is add all of these tailwind classes and then the destructive classes and then the small classes and then this class names function is going to look at all that and then reduce them based on the one that appeared the last just to demonstrate you can see within this page file we have these two buttons the default button and then the small destructive button as you can see on the side here uh, and of course because we have that default variance and we specify default uh, we can remove this it's going to act the exact same uh, same with size we can remove this and this is going to look the exact same and that's it so i hope you learned something from this shorter video if you're interested in seeing more react next.js and typescript content please subscribe it means so much to me anyways i'll be seeing you in the next one peace